and this first one is going to be covering French military bolt-action firearms. Now we have a uh, blog article up with plenty of details, dates, names, that kind of thing. This is mostly just to show off the guns, the rifles themselves. As most of you probably recognize, this is a Model 1886 M93, which is just a small update with a few improvements. Infantry long rifle, chambered for 8mm Bell. This was the world's first smokeless powder cartridge firing rifle. That said, even though at the time its 8x50 cartridge was incredibly advanced for its, um, for its age, it gave a significantly more range, uh, better accuracy, flatter shooting trajectory. The rifle itself was quite contemporary or even a little conservative. It has an internal box magazine, I mean, excuse me, a tube magazine here. You load single shells at a time. Pull back, elevator comes up, strips around, and it also has a magazine feed cutoff here. So, single shot only. This bolt's actually very smooth. It has a very musket style trigger, very straight, which would continue on French rifles for quite a long time. No manual safety, machined receiver. Of course, it has wooden buttstock and wooden hand grip. There was no upper hand guard on these. Very precision, but also very small rear sight, combined with a very large blade front post. It did take a bayonet, a spike bayonet under here. The end of this. This is a stacking round. It's a very long rifle. These were the mainstay of the French military from the late 19th century all the way through World War I and into the 1930s. Most of these were used by the uh, French military in Europe itself where the colonials got a different rifle and uh, they were used very extensively in World War I. They were actually known for being they jokingly called the best single shot rifle of the war because of the way the system works with the tube magazine they couldn't be rapidly topped off at all so um, the magazine tubes were often kept in reserve and then used whenever things heated up by World War I the 8x50 cartridge which was a rimmed round was already starting to look aged and there were attempts to replace it starting as early as 1901 however it remained in service well until the 1930s. So again, kind of that, that, that's kind of a recurring pattern with the French. They will have something very advanced, very modern, and then they'll get very conservative. Or they'll have something very advanced and modern, but not follow through on it. And the Lebel's a perfect example of uh, a very, very modern round for the era, but a very conservatively designed rifle to fire it. But again, for a lot more information on these, please check out the, uh, the blog article, and we'll move on. Alright, next up we have a Berthier 1892 carbine. Essentially the Berthier was designed as a carbine to begin with, because they tried out doing LaBelle carbines and they, they didn't work well. And so they, they went to this design for mounted cavalry type troops and these ultimately ended up being used by a lot of the colonials too. It's still a bolt action rifle but instead of having a tube magazine it takes a packet type clip. These original ones held three rounds so not very many but they were fast to reload by just putting a packet in as you can see, it has a long turned down bolt. Again, no safety. Same musket style trigger, very straight. Still no upper hand guard. Very short, compact weapon, though, with a 17 and a half inch barrel. Very similar sights, but a little bit different from the Labelles. Has a uh, saddle type ring swivel on the side, and then a cavalry type uh, side swivel on the butt. 
these were cheaper and faster to mass produce and not as elegant as a LaBelle perhaps, not as well machine made and everything, but they were known for being incredibly durable and reliable. That's one of the reasons they were used quite a bit in the colonies in Africa and uh, East Asia. They just required low maintenance. They were um, just, just durable. They, they worked really well. In World War I, many of these carbines saw action and uh, were very, very popular with the troops, again, for being uh, lightweight and maneuverable. They were used by special forces, especially at nighttime, kind of over-the-top type raids, that kind of thing, because again, they could get in and get out very quickly with them. They would uh, have an updated version, we'll show you in just a second, but this is the original with the short, small magazine. Note the bottom is open, which would later present some problems. But uh, that said, these are very neat weapons. It does have a bayonet lug up here. That's what makes it an 1892 versus an 1890 variant. But it does take a different bayonet, very different from the LeBel. I actually found my first one of these, not this one. It was a different one when I was visiting up in Portland, Oregon. Oh, Lord, eight, nine years ago and, and brought it home with me on the airplane. That was an interesting experience, but all is well that ends well. And uh, it was just one of my first 8mm LeBel rifles of any type. We have another Berthier rifle. Well, actually, this was a carbine. This is a rifle. This is a Model 1907-15 M16. After the carbines, the Berthier carbines, proved to be very successful, a long rifle was commissioned, and I believe the first, the first variant was in 1902. Then there was a 1905, then the 1907 was released, and the 1915 came out. Now, the 1915 was the most produced version. It still used a three round packet charging system, very much like the uh, carbine in many respects, except it was a long rifle about the size of the LaBelle. Well, in World War I, they found some problems with the Berthiers, and they came up with the M16 modification. Okay? It has an upper handguard, unlike the previous rifle and carbine versions. It has this extended guppy style five shot magazine. It's still a packet type, you can see, but holds two more rounds. And as you see here, it has this folding dust cover on the bottom to keep debris out of the action. So those are the upgrades. The same series of upgrades were given to both carbines and rifles. The rifle is very similar to the original carbine. It's kind of interesting that the rifle came out after the carbine version, except of course it has a um, straight bolt handle, short and thicker. The sights are of course longer and calibrated out further. You can actually fold them over for battle sights or fold them back for this style. So the options still very kind of fiddly and very First World War of them. Interestingly, this takes a LaBelle style bayonet, not the uh, M92, the Berthier carbine bayonet. So it has the same stacking. Has the side sling loop, but instead it also has the swivel on the bottom versus the side, and the swivel actually rotates 360 degrees. Kind of interesting. Again, much like the uh, carbine, these were used mostly by colonial soldiers during the First World War, but many were uh, used in, in Europe, and uh, many continued on through the, uh, uh, really in, until World War II and beyond. In a lot of ways, they were more modern and better liked than LaBelle, mostly because they uh, held five rounds versus uh, a tube magazine. You could just pop in a clip and go again, so they were just, uh, better suited, a little more modern, and of course, again, it was a very durable bolt system, just hard to get it to jam up, easy to clean, everything like that. Still using the same musket style trigger, they're very, very fond of that, but um, you don't see as much about the Berthiers as you do the LaBelles, but they, they, they made them in the millions, just like they did uh, the, the LaBelles.
but uh, this is a long rifle version. Interestingly, some of these were made for France by Remington of the USA, but were never actually accepted into French service for various political and uh, reasons. So many of them ended up being taken in by the U.S. military and issued to um, uh, minority soldiers. I don't know how else to say that more politely, but they were given to um, to second line type soldiers and uh, units made of minorities. And so a lot of these uh, long type berthiers ended up being used by Americans in, in World War One, especially early on when there were, was a shortage of uh, Springfield rifles. All right, we'll move on. And here we have the last major variant chambered for the original 8x50 Lebel cartridge. This is a Lebel 1886 93 R35 carbine. Even though initially they did not want to do or had poor success doing a Lebel carbine, they eventually devo developed the R35 in the interwar period. Now this was a time when France was experiencing um, economic problems, much like in the USA, you know, Europe had a, a depression happening too, so the military budgets were uh, pretty tight. So they took old 1886 rifles and installed new short 17 and a half inch carbine barrels on them and shortened the magazine tube down to hold three rounds. Um, not a lot of benefit to these, they still use the same tube type magazine so you have to load shells in one at a time and then you know pull it up there we go this was stiff still has the mag cut off like the rifle there of course again only holds three cartridges so uh but it was inexpensive to make these and it is significantly shorter and lighter than the full size Lebel. Really by the time this rifle was, or carbine I should say, was being created, they already knew they were switching to a new rimless cartridge, the 75 by 54 But the, this was a cheap way to get keep a few more old Lebels still in service, and uh, these are mostly used by second line troops and uh, police officers and, and things of that nature. But uh, the R35 is a critter. Uh, mechanically, aside from the short barrel, it's identical to a Lebel rifle. Even takes the same bayonet, which is spike type. A lot of these stayed around into the 50s when they were mostly in police service and then they were pulled out. And several were used in the early days of the Second World War. That's what France had, and it still is a uh, reliable weapon, if extremely outdated by the standards of the 1930s and of course a very low capacity but um, you know, it was a weapon <laughs> we'll move on all right moving on here we have one of the lesser known bolt action guns of World War II and honestly one of one of my favorites it's a really interesting and, and nice rifle this is actually the last new truly new pattern of bolt gun adopted by a major military and we can get into the Madsen M47, but that was only adopted by Columbia and a couple of others. But um, this is the French MAS, or Moss if you prefer, Nelly 1936. This was in development, especially its 7.5 by 54 cartridge, which is a rimless round, since the 1920s. In fact, the cartridge is a, a 1929 model cartridge. In a lot of ways, it's a very standard bolt, bolt action, streamlined for mass production, but um, had a lot of modern features. They only made this in one rifle length, a short rifle, so intermediate, not a carbine or a long rifle, which is the, going the very current standard in World War II. Standard bolt action. You notice the bolt has kind of a dog leg contour to the um, handle. Like on the Lee Enfield, it has rear mounted locking lugs, which make for a shorter travel. Pretty normal trigger, nothing special there. And they finally went away from the musket style trigger to a more curved. In fact, this one is ribbed. Has a five round internal Mauser style magazine with easily movable floor plate here. You can see. This has a release button. 
elevation adjustable rear peep sight, protected front post, barrel sticks out a bit. The bayonet's interesting, it's stored underneath and it's a socket stop. You just, let me set this on the floor, pull it out, reverse it around, and put it back in the hole. And there's your bayonet. They did this to make it lightweight, and so the soldier had one less thing to carry on their belt. As you can see there's a bottom sling slot and then a side sling slot. Back here there's just the side style. This is an original sling on it. In fact, this is an all original gun made before, I wouldn't say before World War II began, but it was made before the Germans took over uh, France, before they occupied it. This was actually picked up by a um, now passed away friend's father who came back from Europe. So this is all original as it was picked up in, in France. I'm sure he traded something for it at the end of the war, but it was made before the war. It has the, the kind of black stoving finish, the early Moss 36, excuse me, early Moss 36 features. For those of you who are familiar with these, you'll, you'll recognize them. It, I've shot it. It does work very well. It's a very enjoyable gun. The 7.5 cartridge is extremely similar to 7.5 by 55 Swiss or GP11. Quite accurate. Um, again, in a lot of ways, it, nothing super remarkable about this, but it was a, a very cost-effective rifle and proved to be very durable and reliable. A lot of these ended up being used after World War II in Indochina, which is Vietnam, and they proved to be very... Uh, very well suited for that kind of uh, warfare because the, they ran and kept on running. So the, uh, the the MAS 36 continued in French military service well into the 1950s and even early into the 1960s, but before finally being replaced by a, a semi-automatic self-loading rifle. But um, yeah, they were very uh, well done. Many of these were used against the Germans. This is an original, made before the war, non-refurbished. We'll move on. All right. This is another MAS-36. Specifically, this is a CR-39 paratroopers carbine. This is an original. Interesting critter, these. They were developed right before Germany invaded France, but basically never went into production. There might have been a hundred or so made before, but all these were when it were basically produced after 1945, 1946 to about 1956. It's essentially the same Moss 36 action. But it has a short 17 and a half inch barrel. The hand guards are slimmed down and more rounded. Sling swivel is totally different. It's much smaller and on the bottom. Even the bayonet was uh, shortened compared to the full length rifle. It has this sling here made of leather. But it retracts into the stock. So when it's not in use. And of course, this folding metal buttstock, which is partially hollow. It's made out of aluminium. It's painted. And it just has this lever, and it just folds up. Now, it's only held closed by tension. It doesn't lock to close, but it doesn't fall down too bad either, especially if you keep it in like a pack, like a paratrooper would. And when compacted down like this, it's exactly 24 inches long. As you can see, it's quite a little compact package. Even the sling gets out of the way, which is interesting. Receivers in the back here. This does have the correct larger square tang in here in the back. To unfold it, just pull it down, and it'll lock open. If you didn't see, there's a lever here on the side that lets you release it. 
very simple, but uh, yeah. It's interesting how they molded the metal stock after the lines of the wood one. Very similar. I can't say this is light, but it is very compact. These were used extensively by the French paratroopers, and uh, many were used at uh, the Battle of Dinh Binh Phu, and uh, were quite popular and highly prized. Many of them were kept at uh, French jump schools well into the 1960s and 1970s. Just a very compact little little carbine. You don't see many bolt guns with the folding stock of this style. Kind of unique. These are relatively rare in the USA. Some built from kits using original Moss rifles were around from Sarko and very few original factory built ones from France like this one which was probably built in the late 1940s are available. It does have a lot of the later Moss features such as the bolt hold open follower and the magazine which the early one you saw did not have has the updated style rear sight, which is easier to adjust. Has the uh, hooded front post, different style of wood, and more of a Parkerized type finish. Just charge it there. But I wanted to share this because it's definitely something you don't see too often. I was very fortunate to get this out of a gentleman's collection. He uh, passed along uh, two years ago and by a friend of a friend I was made aware of this one being available for purchase and I, I jumped on it. I always thought having one of these would be interesting and neat and it is. It's definitely uh, definitely something to, to be prized and appreciated. And definitely one of the rarer French guns in the, in the country. Maybe save the uh, the FAMAS, but yeah, that we would uh, show up. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I'll be happy to try and help, but it is pretty much as you see it here, just a short MOS 36. We'll move on. And for our final French bolt action military rifle today, for this section, we have the MOS, or MAS 3651. Now this is just the grenade launching variant. It fires 22 millimeter standard NATO grenades. Launchers here. It has this warm wheel to adjust. Also these sights here, I've got to flip it around. Press this lever and they flick up. One position, two position. has this rubber boot, which you can see is even dated, 1951, I think they all are, for launching grenades, makes it a longer stock too. This is a later variant, obviously, and it's been refurbished, so it has the Parkerized finish, the bolt pulled back mag follower, the easier to adjust rear sights, the smooth non-ribbed trigger, for not her pleasure. Now these do use the earlier style unhooded front sight because of these uh, sights here so they can raise properly and not interfere. And then this grenade launcher, it even has a, uh, still has a bayonet, although it's recessed more because of the grenade launcher being in there. And the uh, stacking hook is also bobbed a bit. The grenade launcher does add some length and heft. This is a relatively heavy rifle, but if you're going to be shooting rifle grenades out of it, why not? Now these stayed in service longer than the standard MOS 36 because while the semi-automatic uh, MOS 49 and 4956s were taking over, they still like to use these for launching grenades. So you could see these in service well into the 1960s, especially early, and uh, they would use them as a, basically a dedicated grenade launcher. But, um, again, these were used in Algiers and uh, Indochina, and were um, every bit as effective and durable as all the others. I um, uh, actually found this one at a local pawn shop several years ago, and I picked it up. They're not expensive, but they're not as common as the standard rifles, and it's kind of an interesting piece with the full grenade launcher kit on it. 
Well, thank you for tuning into this section, and tune in. We'll have a couple more for you soon, uh, continuing the theme of uh, French military uh, rifles and uh, firearms.